what's up guys welcome back to the channel so since last time i went ahead and took the radiator stack back apart so i could get that mount cleaned up and painted let's take a look at that so we got it all painted up with kind of a nato gray kind of color i thought it would kind of go good with the lime green and then the green gray on the exterior of the vehicle so everything is mounted up here how it's going to sit permanently nothing here is really touching anything else i isolated pretty much everything i could so that there's no vibrations between anything i went ahead and put some kind of like weather stripping type things around as well that way it just is no metal against metal rubbing i also went ahead and put some weather stripping between the radiator and intercooler as well that should just help eliminate any vibrations between there it also kind of helps seal it up so that the air will flow all the way through so in the last video i think i showed that i went ahead and cut the mount short of what it was when I previously designed it all the way to the top. Now that was really just because whatever that metal went all the way up, it was pushing the intercooler up too high. And I was getting a little concerned with how tall that the intercooler tubing was gonna come into the intercooler here. I didn't want it to hit the hood. Uh, so I went ahead and took that off and it lowered it back down some. I will be creating a mounting system that'll hold down this top part as well. I just haven't gotten to that and it's not my top priority right now. But because we have that in place now, you know what our next step is. We need to start fabbing up the charge pipes for this. Now this is going to get interesting because I have never tried to create a custom charge pipe or exhaust or anything like that uh, have welded things up and created flat mounts and everything but tubing is possibly a little bit different we're actually going to find out how good i am at this so for the charge pipes i do have a three inch stainless steel tubing uh, this one is just a pretty bent this way i can cut what i need and actually mount it in that way this piece here will actually get cut into a lot of different pieces just for all of the different bend angles that it has here. I also have a good section of straight three inch stainless as well. That will help us on a lot of the straight sections here. The driver's side charge pipe does have a good distance of straight pipe that should go into it. So to cut this tubing, I went ahead and purchased a cold saw. I've already tested this out. It cuts straight through that, super clean. And basically you can just pick up the tubing right after it's cut and it won't burn you. This should also save me a lot of time so I don't have to do as much cleaning on the pipe uh, between cutting and welding them together. So to weld this up, we are gonna be using the TIG welder. I actually had to go ahead and get another tank of gas already. It wasn't because I have welded that much with it, but because the regulator that I had was actually leaking air every time I turned it on, but it wasn't making a sound. So I didn't know it was leaking until I kind of put my face down there and actually could feel the air coming out of it. So I do have another regulator to put on this. And hopefully after that, we won't be leaking any air while we're using it. And hopefully this tank will last me a little bit longer than the last one. Now when welding stainless steel tubing, it is recommended that you back purge with the argon gas into the tube. That way the backside has coverage of the gas as well. Now this is a type of powder that we will be mixing uh, with a alcohol base. And this becomes kind of a protected layer on the inside so that I don't need to do back purging. I have used it before and it does seem to work so we're going to give this a shot so I don't have to try to do the back purging on the tubing, especially when it comes to the exhaust tubing. That is a big section of tube that I don't want to back purge the whole section. So I went ahead and cut a section of this three inch tubing just to see how the saw would do. And it actually surprised me. It cuts very clean on here. This is actually the edge. This is not prepped at all. Uh, you could tell there's very, very fine little burrs on it, but nothing that's going to get in the way of being able to work with this. I'm not going to cut my hand or anything on it. Very minimal prep would be needed between this and the other piece. We also have some acetone here. This is just going to help us clean the stainless steel before we weld it. Whenever you're welding stainless steel, you want the pieces to be as clean as possible to get the best weld.
So we got our two pipes pretty much made up to where we're ready to weld them together. I need to go ahead and clean up the weld locations on both. And also we're going to go ahead and brush in this solar flux stuff as well. So I'm going to make some marks a little bit further down on these pieces uh, for location marks just so I know how the pieces fit together. That's what these were here. So also I didn't film a lot of it but whenever we had this up there, I had pieces up there, would mark them, take them over, grind them down, bring them back, mark them again. Uh, so it does take time. Just take your time with it. Um, you can always take more off, but you can't add more on. Well, you kind of can, but it's not easy. So if you take your time with it, you should get a pretty good fit, which will make this a lot easier to weld up. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to leave the weld at the location or go ahead and sand it down and get these all polished up. Either that or just do the brushed kind of stainless look on them. So we went ahead and wiped down the ends here. So now we're going to go ahead and take a piece of sandpaper. This is a piece that I dedicated to work with stainless steel. You don't want contaminants getting into your sandpaper and then into your piece as well. So. Whenever you're working on stainless, have like uh, things that are dedicated to working on stainless. This is a brush that I have dedicated to working on stainless as well. Um, I do have a flapper disc that is dedicated to working on stainless. A cutting disc dedicated to working on stainless. Uh, so you don't want to get contaminants in your stainless or then it becomes not stainless anymore. So. That and your welds won't be as good. So we're going to prep this up pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and sand down these edges. We're going to get a good surface to go ahead and weld the pieces together. got a little bit of this solar flux stuff here it is like a powder kind of mixture uh, we're going to mix this with some alcohol we're going to brush it on the inside of the piece on both sides uh, and then we're going to let that dry before we weld any on this so we now have that all coated on the inside as you can see there uh, I'm going to now put these together and go ahead and tack weld them together. Then we'll go ahead and put it back on the engine and make sure everything fits up before we weld this fully together. So there we have it guys, there is our first piece. Uh, so this one was actually pretty simple. It's just a few simple little angles and everything. Uh, I went ahead and ground down the welds. I want to do like a brushed stainless look on this or polish it. My welds actually looked a lot better than my practice welds, so I'm very happy about that. I think I have the settings just right. My speed and everything seemed pretty good. It was laying down pretty well. So next piece we're going to work on is the passenger side here. It's what goes into the engine after it goes through the intercooler. So it's going to be a little bit of a complicated bend coming up and around, and then we'll have to bend it back kind of over to the intercooler there. So with this passenger side piece, I knew I kind of needed to go around the alternator. Uh, that way it doesn't stick up too high going over the top. Basically, I started out with a 90 degree here, came down, and then have, it's a 45 degree coupler on there. 
This piece is actually, was a 120 degree piece that I actually trimmed off a little bit more uh, from 120. So this may be about 100, 110 degrees. Uh, that basically leaves me just a small little gap that is straight across to fill. I just went ahead and cut that piece. So once that piece fits in here nice, we'll go ahead and tack it up and again, check our fitting on it, make sure it's good, and then we will weld that all up. From the front here, you can see a little bit better on that charge pipe, how it goes up and around, kind of back down and then into the intercooler there. Uh, with the driver's side, we had it a lot more simple where we could just go straight back and do a 90 right into the turbo there. I may come back and redo this one later. Uh, I'm not real sure. The fitment's fine. I think it'll work fine, but just to have a little bit more uh, curved fitment throughout there, I think would look nice. So I may come back and do that later once I have this all together, but right now it fits fine. I'm gonna leave it. Uh, I'm going to get to tacking this up and then we'll fit this in here. All right, I think we actually have the intercooler tubes fully complete. I need to still put a bead around the edges. Uh, as you can see, this passenger side here definitely had a lot more bends in it that were required to make it fit around the alternator and some of the other things that are on the engine there. So I think I'm going to go with the brushed kind of look on this stainless steel pipe. Um, I would polish it up, but there's not a whole lot of things on this engine that are really shiny. A lot of it's just kind of the dull metal look. So the two couplers I use that go into the intercooler up here, this is going to be a 45 degree coupler. And on that side, it's just a 30 degree coupler. Uh, with the 30 degree, it just lined up better than a 45. Uh, don't worry, the blue here is not staying and that black one here is not staying either. I have two better couplers that are coming in for those two and they will be black as well. Basically, I just use these to go ahead and mock everything up because the other ones are gonna take a while to ship. So this is the map sensor. This is going to need to mount up to this intercooler pipe. I'll need to order a uh, weld on bung that'll go on here and this should bolt right up to it. So over the next week, I'm going to take these off and do a lot of sanding and get that brush look to them. That will take me a while, so I'm not going to put it on this episode. I'm just gonna do that behind the scenes. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it there for this weekend, guys. We got the charge pipes made up. They're not fully finished yet. I still need to work on that map sensor, welding in a bung there for that to bolt to. So I know I didn't go into too much detail on how I mocked up all this intercooler tubing and everything. Uh, and that's mainly just because this is the first time I've ever done this myself. There's plenty of other YouTube videos out there of professionals that are trying to help you with this. There's a lot of channels out there that are better suited to watch for that. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a overview on how I ran them, kind of the angles that I use in them as well. And again, one of the biggest things, just work slow with it. You want that piping to fit up very well to each other. Uh, you don't want to overcut something and then have to redo it completely. So take your time on it and it'll turn out all right. I do recommend doing some research. Uh, there is definitely a lot of YouTube channels out there that will help y'all with this. I appreciate y'all watching guys. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, ask me a question if you want anything in more detail. I'll try to answer those uh, or do an update in the next video on something if it's really important. Again, thank you guys. And as always, I'll see y'all next time.